good. Thanks. <laughs> Is the audio good? Give me a thumbs up for the audio. I'm going to give it a few more minutes before I get started to get some more people on here. Good. Just a little disclaimer, my cat is being very, very uh, excited this morning. <laughs> so she might zoom by the camera a couple times throughout this live stream. Rob's Pizza! Hey, Rob's Pizza! <laughs> I miss your pizza so much. I miss all your food. Okay, so it's 11.30 now. I'll do my little intro and then invite my guest on. Uh, so welcome to Glassroots Virtual Studios, everyone. My name is Richard, and on normal days you can find me in the flame shop at Glassroots <laughs> in North New Jersey. Glassroots is a glass art studio in North New Jersey that uh, works to ignite and build the cultural and economic vitality of our community through the glass arts. Uh, since you can't visit our studios at this time, each day we're bringing activities to you via Facebook, Instagram, and our website. Please be sure to sign up for our email list to get a full week's schedule ahead of time by sending your email to info at glassroots.org. And follow us on Facebook and Instagram to stay up to date on all of our programming. Um, this week, each week we've been doing themes, and the, week for, uh, the theme for this week is the force of art. Um, in honor of May the 4th, uh, it's a Star Wars themed week, that's my shirt here. And uh, today we're bringing you an installment of The Looking Glass. And what The Looking Glass is, is a series of um, demonstrations and interviews from artists around the world. And today, I am super excited because I get to interview one of my first glass blowing teachers, Rob Panapinto. He's an amazing artist. And hopefully he'll request to join, and then I can get him on here. So we're super excited today. How's everybody feeling? Yes, bacon slice from Roberts, please. Thank you, too. Let's see. No. Here we go. So just give me one second to get our guest on. So sorry for our technical difficulties. We're trying to get Rob on now. Here we go. Awesome. <laughs> hey, Rob. Hey, Richard. Hey, Richard. How's it How going? Good. Great to see your face. It's great to see you too, buddy. Thanks for having me. <laughs> no problem. So um, we chose you today. Originally, I had thought, because I always see you in Star Wars memorabilia, that I thought you were this huge Star Wars fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I am, and, but maybe not as big as, 
I might have seen. I think one of the ongoing jokes with me and my family was that somebody got me some Star Wars stuff early on. Um, and then like every holiday, every birthday, somebody would get me something else. So I would always wear the t-shirts. I've got just a ton of things. <laughs> I was going to set it all up for you today, but it, it, it's actually, it's just too much. There's just too much stuff around. <laughs> Um, no, no problem. I totally but I do, that. I yeah, I do love the movies, and it's always been a tradition to go to the movies, right? Uh, especially the Star Wars, like the big blockbuster. Exactly. You know. So I, I think we basically just used it as an excuse to talk to each other, <laughs> which is perfectly fine. Why do we need an excuse? Yeah. yeah um. So I just want to read off a little bio of you. Uh, you've been involved uh, in the glass making scene for twenty years. I did not know that. <laughs> it's awesome. And um, you're also a teaching artist, and you've worked at Glassroots. Uh, you teach at Urban Glass. And you just finished up your degree at Ramapo College. Is that right? I did, yep, December. Awesome. And and you're just a normal, you're just a, an amazing artist. You're a, a great Thank glass you. blower, and you work in a bunch of different mediums. So if you don't mind, why don't you tell the people a little bit about yourself? Uh, sure. Well, uh, I live in New Jersey. Um, if you're from the area, I grew up in Bogota. Uh, I was, uh, adopted pretty early on and that's always been a big part of like my identity and my art. Um, my dad was a social worker in Newark, really close to where Glassroots is. And that was a huge part of me getting involved in Glassroots. Um, and uh, I went to Pratt in the 90s, and uh, it wasn't really, I was kind of young and out of control, and it, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. And uh, I was making some paintings, and the paintings I was using uh, stained glass, like inclusions, to get kind of new layers and colors. And somebody told me about uh, Urban Glass, and uh, I went down to check it out, and I walked in. And there was, you know, all the, the regulars of the day. That was probably like kind of middle, mid 90s. So maybe a little longer than 20 years ago. Uh, Deb Sharesco and Joe Pagano and Jeff Zimmerman and all these, you know, great glass blowers were working there. And it was amazing. And once I walked in, I signed up uh, as a work study. And uh, I just kept going from there on, um, you know, working for uh, just a, a huge amount of talented people. I've had a been really lucky to to uh, be a part of so many great teams over the years that's awesome and i guess going back a little further what uh were you always like inclined to be an artist or was that always like your life fashion uh yeah one of my good childhood friends just logged on with us and uh that was my neighbor next door and her father was uh, a sculptor and uh, I used to be able to see him working like outside my bedroom window. He would be out there carving stone on a nice day. And uh, so their family was a really big influence on mine uh, or on my, on my career. Um, but I think I just always found myself doing like really uh, weird like doodles and drawing on magazines and stuff like that. Uh, playing with my food, <laughs> playing with clay, with wax. Uh, when I was really young, I used to love to take G.I. Joes and take them apart and uh, melt them and make them look really war-torn and then put them back together all different to make my own custom action figures and stuff like that. So, uh, that yeah, so that, cool. I think it was just really a, a thing early on. And I, I love kind of keeping those things, um, you know, bringing them back into themes of stuff I'm working on. Yeah. So, so what is it? Is there stuff that you uh, like to produce or is there like a, a theme to your artwork? I mean, glass. Yeah. Glass, glass. is the, <laughs> I just want to blow glass like that, that video that was out years ago. Like I don't care. No. End goal is, is really about blowing glass, but I do to especially with uh, Ramapo oh. lately um, you know getting to be a part of the iron pours over there and, and working in ceramics has been um, life-changing for sure and it's been really cool because glass blowing is so extreme and you think you've seen it all and then uh, to, to get to be a part of some other pretty extreme work like uh, iron pours and, and aluminum pours that we had at Ramapo was, was pretty awesome too.
For sure. And and can you talk a little bit about your time at Ramapo? Because I, I heard that you worked on this awesome project that you like built a furnace from scratch, basically. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, um, you know, ever since I left Glass Roots years ago, I think uh, kind of front and center, not only like kind of, uh, you know, what I could do to improve my own career, but like how can I kind of pay back and, and pay it forward and, and the uh, long term idea was that, you know, getting get, get back to my education um, might help me give back more in the end. Uh, so not being able to blow a glass was kind of heartbreaking. And I saw an artist uh, post on Facebook that he was giving away his old furnace, um, but it needed to be taken apart. Uh, and so uh, some friends of mine, we went up there and we took all the pieces that we could. And that gave me kind of like the, the basis to start my project to, I was going to just rebuild it in any fashion, you know, um, but then Ramapo came in and they gave me a, a pretty nice uh, budget to work with to, to get a uh, burner and some other supplies. And then they had a lot of supplies there. Uh, Urban Glass, Glass Roots came through and gave me glass and other supplies. So all these people were really uh, wonderful in helping me uh, make this senior thesis project um, you know, possible. Uh, and in the end, we, we only had a couple of days of glass blowing, but we got it, we got it <laughs> turned on twice and the furnace is still over there. And, uh, you know, it's a, yeah, where it's does a, it live? It's, uh, it's in the sculpture department at Ramapo, which is about three miles from my house, which was the best commute I've ever had, I think in my <laughs> life. Um, so I'm still kind of pushing for them to, you know, kind of kick the ball down the road and, and we're hoping to do a workshop. I think, uh, when normal life resumes, we were going to be trying to do a workshop around now, around April was the goal. Um, but we have, you know, kind of put that aside. And, and when things get back to normal, uh, I hope that they'll they'll want to keep kicking the ball down the road. And the goal would be to, you know, have them have a glass program at some point. Right. And like, it, it, it's just kind of like mind blowing to me. Like, it would be such a shame for something like that to go to waste because like, I, I don't know, for for people who aren't into like the glass or art world, if we have any viewers like that, like you think of a furnace as like something in your basement that like you call somebody to repair. Like you don't think about like how it's made or like what other types of furnaces or equipment are out there. So like the fact that you built this thing from scratch is kind of mind blowing to me. <laughs> Thanks man. Well, I had a lot of help, um, but I, I, it took me a year. It was a lot of work and it, uh, it was, it was really satisfying to, to see it come to life and, um, you know, to be able to share that, I got to kind of teach my professor how to, to blow glass and, uh, and some of my uh, community there, some of the fellow students that were around. Uh, so it was just a really great experience. And yeah, I, I, I will not let it go to waste uh, because there's so much put into it. So, um, you know, yeah, there's so much potential. So I just want to yeah. remind, so I just want to uh, show all our, all of our viewers, um, not show them, but say uh, welcome to our virtual studios if you're just joining on. Um, we have Rob Panapinto here. He, we are interviewing him. He's an awesome artist, uh, one of my first glass blowing teachers. And if you have any questions, if you want to drop them in the comments, we'll try to answer them throughout the program. Um, so you were one of my first glass blowing teachers, and I think you were a great teacher. You and Jason Manami kind of like started this, started me on this journey. Uh, right. I came in like not knowing anything about glass and like both of you were just so supportive of me. And I think that you guys are the reason I'm here today or one of the reasons why I'm here. Um, I mean, that means a lot to me, Richard. Really, <laughs> really so no problem. So do you want to talk a little bit about teaching? Like, do, do you have any favorite parts about teaching or any like stories? Uh well, I mean, you're you're like you guys are you especially and a couple other students um, are are my success stories, and that's that's better than any any gallery show to 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 see you and Yaz and Amira and uh, other students that I've had, and uh, especially you guys though coming back to work for Glassroots years later, uh, or just you know, I mean, you've been there the whole time. I feel like right, you really haven't left the organization. <laughs> Since, yeah, I, I, I've been there a pretty long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think that's awesome because I know, um, you know, to have any part in what you guys are doing uh, is, is, is a great reward. And to know that I know that you guys are giving back to the community uh, probably tenfold of what I was able to give, if not more. 
Uh, so that is always awesome. And I just love, I think I've, I've had the opportunity to teach a lot of beginning classes and, um, and to get people started to get that like magic rolling, you know, those, that first gather, that first successful piece in the box, your first exactly. cup, you know, it's terrible, whatever you made, uh, <laughs> usually, <laughs> you know, sometimes it's not, but to be a part of that experience, um, it has been very rewarding. And then, um, you know, I think just for me, glass blowing is like being a musician. It's in, in a band or in a lot of different bands and, uh, and, and to be able to collaborate with people, to know that uh, a lot of people's artwork, you know, that they needed you at the moment for and you were there and, and it's not, it's, it's like nothing else, you know, it's, it's not really even, it's like playing a song perfectly or as best as, as the band could do it all together and it, you know it really you need everybody for that piece on point the whole time and exactly like i don't think people realize how much of a team requires like even if like even like the chihulis of the world like how many people go behind a chihuly to get one of his chandeliers made um yeah, yeah. it's it's incredible um and yeah, for me too, like teaching, like it's kind of trippy now that I'm teaching students that are the same age that when I started at Glassroots, like I'm teaching like 10 year old kids now. <laughs> and it's just a, a really trippy thing. And I'm like, it makes me really happy to see that, to be that step for them too going forward. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, you know, um, I know even though like my first experience at Pratt, uh, I it was, it was not great, like, you know, grade wise and stuff, but I had a couple teachers. I had this one drawing teacher and, and she changed my whole life just by teaching me how to draw in, in her style, you know, taking, and I've always kept that with me. And uh, thank you, Mrs. Sweet, wherever you are now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we definitely all had like a few art teachers that if you're an artist, I would assume that you had a few art teachers that kind of propelled you. Yeah. Um, and some that some that probably just made you cry a lot too. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, so things have been kind of crazy. I, I don't have to say how crazy things have been. Um, but for me personally, being away from the studio, I didn't think I'd miss it this much. Um, and I'm kind of kicking myself for like taking for granted, like being in the studio and being around other artists. Um, how have these recent circumstances affected you? Uh, yeah, I definitely, I mean, I feel like my whole life is collaboration. So to walk away from that and, uh, is, is really difficult. And I feel like I've already been doing it for a long time by going back to school. Um, so I just kind of finished this journey of going back and I went to Bergen community first to get my associates and then to Ramapo to get my bachelor's. And so that was a good three and a half years of not really being able to be in the glass shop. Um, and so it, you are, I already had this kind of heartbreak. Um, I think uh, one, one of the things I learned uh, early on, or one of the things I take with me a lot early on uh, from uh, John Peralt, who used to run Urban Glass when I first started there. Uh, and I think uh, Deborah Shresco also used the same quote in her uh, uh, Netflix show that uh, glass is a cruel mistress. And, uh, <laughs> And I've always, like, as soon as he said that, I was like, yeah, it's true. It's like, you know, it's really expensive to blow glass, especially if you're in New York or New Jersey or the metro area. It's like, it's hard to hide kitty cat. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's like super crazy. Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's, all, it's all good. My dog's locked out of here. Out of my room. <laughs> um, but but it, I think once you fall in love with the, the medium, you know, uh, time away can can be really difficult and figuring out how to you know, have the time that you want with it is really difficult. I mean, I've been doing it for over 20 years and I still haven't had enough time to really feel like, uh, you know, I haven't been able to sit for a year and just make cups. And that's like life goals right there, you know, to, yeah. to, be, to be, have the freedom to, to use the material the way you, you know, you really know you want to. For sure. Is, yeah. is there any way that you're using this time now to like prepare for when we get back? Uh, yeah, well, I was I was with uh, the guardianship uh, under the supervision of your guest yesterday or Helen's guest yesterday. Right. Um, uh, and uh, Josh Noblick was awesome. So I was doing we were working on kind of building some stuff over there. 
but through my good buddy Moshe Berserker, he lent me a lamp working torch, which I've been resisting for 25 years. <laughs> and uh, I set up a little lamp shop over there. And I've been, you know, uh, I haven't been back in a while, but I did get to the point where I was able to make little hands and stuff like that, um, which was pretty awesome and satisfying because I always thought I could make little robot parts one day, lamp yeah. works, and it would be like the better way to go. But I've just been fighting <laughs> it for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, that um, hurts me being a flame worker. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But I mean, I'm biased. I, I'm gonna. You're gonna have to. We're gonna have to have you give me a lesson when this all. Of course, uh, yeah. Settles down because I I could use some help. I definitely cracked a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But well, I, I, I think I, you know, there's I, a I love for it. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely feel like there's some like crossover too between glass blowing and flame working. Like if you're a good sculptor, like you you can do it in glass blowing or flame working regardless. Yeah, and I think now like for, further down the road, as far as just what people are making in glass and how they're mixing the two techniques is like there's there's no reason not to 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 get on that and learn that. Um, for sure. Use it. Yeah, it's such a great resource. I kind of really like what you said earlier about. Um, like your grades not being good in school, but you taking away other messages. <laughs> because like, I have a lot of friends now, um, I'm in Rutgers now, and a lot of people, this is their the last semester, this is like they're graduating, and like there's so much anxiety of like, I just spent all this time and now what? Like there's no, there's nowhere for me to get a job, there's nowhere for me to practice my practice. And I, I think something to take away from the college experience, like if there was something to take away are like little moments like that. So like friendships you might've built or relationships you might've built or lessons that you learned from an instructor. Um, so I, I think that's been something that's hard for people in all fields, like for students and artists too. Yeah, I can't, I can't imagine being still in school this semester. Uh, I have a, a son who's 13 now and, uh, just seeing how his education has shifted. He's loving it because, you know, it's like 50% Fortnite time. <laughs> um, but uh, I can't, I can't imagine the college experience, especially the studio art experience. Um, you know, that is really tough. And then also having access to stuff pulled away from you. Uh, I miss the, the Ramapo sculpture shop so much and I keep driving by and it's locked and it's got cones in front of it. And I'm like, just, I'm just waiting for, for my people to to be able to go back in there and just and hang out and uh, yeah you know even though it wasn't glass blowing I learned to weld I learned uh, you know the ceramics shop over there and then just the program in general um, uh, Joel Wiseman who was my professor in charge uh, is just really hooked up well with guys like Josh Knobloch and uh, all this these guys Brent Howard from Yale so we did a lot of iron pours with Yale students and uh and that it just made it feel like especially the first two semesters i was there it felt like a, an ivy league art school it felt like i was going to RISD. uh it just didn't have the student body uh yet but i feel like the potential is there and uh you know i'd love sure. to see see that grow and expand and you know maybe even get glass roots involved they have a lot of really cool toys that uh are really fun to play with so yeah, I, I definitely think when, especially now that we're moving to the new space and we're trying to expand, I think there's going to be lots of opportunity for like collaboration with other uh, organizations. And and it's even it's crazy too about like colleges like uh, like I know there's this one college like the students are suing the school because like for studio fees like you paid all this money for to access these studios and then you can't even get it. So yeah, yeah, I heard uh, Ramapo students that are stuck on campus at one point were being. Uh, told they were going to be charged for the rooms now an extra oh. seventeen dollars a day and because they want to be there so bad. <laughs> well, I think a lot of you know a lot of kids are stuck there, like international yeah. students, like couldn't get back in time, or people that didn't make the moves or lived too far away, and uh, for sure, you know, or just don't have the you know the, the whole the whole way it affects the 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 scale of of people in financial need. Um, is is crazy, and so you know, kids that were on a meal plan, how does that transfer over into their lives now? And uh, you know, so uh, I feel you know super lucky to be you know where I'm at, uh, and I'm I would like to find a way more to give back to help. Yeah, that, you know. my my motto through all this is like it could always be worse. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah, I could. And, you know, I'm sure most of us are connected by one or two people that do, that do have it worse or suffering worse or have lost somebody right now. So, Right. Yeah. Um, so in the meantime, are you doing anything like creative? Like, I, I know you you do painting. Is, is that something that you've done? I, I love, first of all, I love your paintings when you, Thanks. I think there's like some uh, like small like show that we did at Glassers and you brought one of your like Google map sky view pictures and like that like was like so cool to me and like even now i was looking at your website and you have like all the um the shipping dock paintings yeah, and like the paint yeah. is like so thick and nice and like being in a uh painting class now it's like i love that like thick kind of application of paint <laughs> so have yeah, you been doing but, anything creative or uh yeah right now i'm working for my wife's company doing illustrations um and my wife uh, has this wonderful company called House 22, where she has been designing mostly beer labels for a couple of different companies. This is one of them, Cycle Brewing, right there. Oh, nice. Uh, uh, yeah. So, um, and then uh, Alaska Brewing, I've been doing a lot of illustrations for, but I can't really show any of them yet because they're not out yet. But hopefully, sure. in uh, like a week or two, I think my first <laughs> solo projects come out. So uh, my wife and I have always kind of worked together. We've had a couple collaborative companies together. Uh, she's a crazy entrepreneur at uh, when she went to SVA for grad school and um, she, her, she, her project, her grad project was this stacking bowl set that uh, during her, her show, she had people come in and, and, you know, offer her to be business partners and, uh, they took it to QVC and it, it changed our lives at the time. It was right before I started at Glass Roots. Um, and it was really awesome to be a part of. Uh, and then we've had like a surface design company together. But my wife has uh, since then always had this uh, this graphic design company, House 22, for uh, several years now. And I've done like uh, hand illustration on paper and we go back and forth scanning it into, you know, the computer. Uh, but now we've moved on to an iPad, which has kind of changed my life. Uh, it was like a really great investment. And uh, I love yeah. the, the stylus and being able to work in Photoshop or, you know, whatever the, I think it's called Fresco right now that I'm using. Yeah. Um, For and, some reason, I never like got into drawing on an iPad or like a tablet or anything. Like the, the connection from like stylus to paper is like yeah. not the same for me but then recently yeah. i just downloaded this quick app and like i think the the fastness of it is like uh, that's like that's definitely going to get me into it one day <laughs> yeah yeah i i really wasn't either but then it was so hard to go back and forth and draw something on hand and print it out and then and and it was it wasn't the same i think we had looked at uh you know uh, wacom technology which was before the ipad to use a stylus and it was just too expensive and too, you know, PC based. And my wife works in the Mac world. Yeah. So uh, once I tried this at the store, I was like, okay, this is going <laughs> to save us like eight hours a day. And, uh, I gotcha. and it's been cool to do something, you know, I, I really enjoy it. It's not, um, it's not glass blowing. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but yeah. But it's, it's good to know that um, I can help other than, you know, I'm kind of the housewife over here right now. So, uh, <laughs> so it's nice to know that I'm, I'm adding to the income a little bit. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to do another like illustration portfolio on the side. And uh, I got a, a 20 ton dumpster and I've been cleaning out my basement and attic spaces <laughs> and kind of remaking. I've always had a basement studio. Uh, and it's just, you know, maybe I, I might have a little bit of a hoarding problem. So I've just been kind of <laughs> cleansing and starting anew with my studio. Yeah, I feel like I think a lot of artists are like secretly hoarders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so it's so, it's make so a great easy. Show. Yeah. <laughs> it's so hard um, to throw things out, you know. Exactly. But like now is like the perfect time to like do that to like reset and like, you know, clean out spaces or make new spaces or make new use of spaces um so i think my last question for you is like what are your hopes for things going back to normal i think a lot of people are starting to think of like what the new normal looks like and like what does that look like for you yeah uh 
I, I mean, I hope it, it looks like people kind of have more concern for each other and, you know, realize how short and fragile life is and, and that we're wasting time fighting over, you know, stupid things that we don't agree on politics and stuff like that. And that, that we can get past that and, uh, you know, kind of take care of the people that need to be taken, taken care of instead of, you know, the situation that kind of is now that we're still, we really haven't equaled the scales of, of poverty and, and things like that. And, uh, so For that sure. I, I, you know, I think uh, hopefully that this affects people to the point where they, they're more considerate. Yeah. There. For sure. That's something I think I keep realizing too. Like um, you're realizing what's actually important now. Like some things that you thought were important really are not as important. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it, you know, uh, going to like, I've never been so affected to go grocery shopping and it's like, uh, it's, it's a frightening world. I think sometimes like at least yeah. in my area, everybody is really, you know, uh, I feel like they're either, on board or not on board completely with what's going on exactly and, uh, you know i'm just and i think that... even now it's like i think people that were on board are starting to become like jumping ship because it's just like so much to ask people but yeah yeah, yeah by the end of an hour in the grocery store i'm like get out of my way i'm gonna <laughs> get home I got For it. Sure. Yeah. social distance me please it's even got to the point where it's like, okay, I can't get my ice cream now. I have to get it like right at the end because I'm going to be in the, in the line for another hour. It's going to be melted by the time I get home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've got a whole system down and bags and wipes and my mask. And, and it's, you know, it's not fun. I really love to cook. So I, and I am, I kind of, that's my role in our family. I'm, I'm the, the cook here for, for our house. And so I like to just like peruse around the supermarket and like check out the fruit or the vegetables and the produce, yeah. you know, like, I don't want to like run through there and <laughs> be afraid. And while holding your breath, like. <laughs> yeah. But it, I do find like, it is cool. Like I've been going to the same kind of stores for so long and to see, uh, you know, I, I, I guess people that know me, I guess I talk to a lot of people a lot. And, um, you know, some people make fun of me for that. But so I, I've talked to the same people at the grocery store forever. And to see how a lot of these people that I've known, you know, on a very casual basis that have had like a lot of struggles and felt unappreciated now seem like they, you know, it's nice to feel like they know that other people appreciate that they're going to work. So exactly. Eat, you know? Yeah. So, for sure. Um, well, this has been really fun, Rob. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. I really I appreciate it. Yeah, I can't wait to things get back to normal and then we can be in the studio making flame working things. And yeah, yeah, I need a I lesson. Can, I can get back possible. into the hot shop. <laughs> I, I found our, our spider the other day. I was going to break it out, but I broke some legs. I, I've been saying I was going to glue that thing back together forever. Oh, no. oh got to do but, it. Yeah, I saved it. I saved it. I guess, I, <laughs> it's not. I'm, it's not getting thrown out. I wonder what I have to have that like the fuse spider that I made too somewhere. I, that has to be somewhere in this house. I have to find That's that. Fun. <laughs> that was a good but, time. Yeah, thank you so much for joining, Rob. No Thanks problem. for talking no with me today. Thanks, everybody. Um, I just want to give a quick little outro. Thanks everybody for joining. Oh, is there any like questions for Rob too? If you have any questions, you can. Send them in here. I see my mom made a Facebook and she's joining us. Oh, Amira started. Amira started crying when y you yeah. talked about like the impact on us. Like, <laughs> it's been a real tearjerker episode. Oh, thanks, guys. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't really want to. I didn't mean to make. I was going to do a slideshow that probably would have been less, or, <laughs> or maybe more tears. I don't know. All right. Well. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Uh, we're glad that we can provide you our virtual studios free of charge to our students and the larger community. Uh, if you're able to make a gift to support our ongoing operations, please make a donation online at glassroots.org slash donate. Um, Rob, where can the good people find you? On uh, social media, website or yeah, maybe you can find account. me on, on Instagram. Uh, if you see my account right here, it's it's of course, really hard to relate. It's underscore R zero B P underscore. <laughs>
And uh, I also have robertpanapinto.com is my website where you can contact me if, uh, if you have any questions or you want to do a collaboration of some sort, please feel free to reach out. Awesome. Well, yeah. thanks again, Rob. If you haven't no followed us, definitely sign up to follow us for more um, things. Thanks for the May the 4th week, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Richard. Take care, buddy. Bye, everybody. Thanks, See ya. Bye.